Hello everyone. I uh, just want to share something that uh, happened in the last two days. Um, I had parent-teacher conferences for two days at my school and I, during this time, I realized something uh, quite interesting and this is it. I think that the more we as teachers learn about how second language acquisition works, the better we can handle many of the questions and the comments that teachers and students have during parent-teacher conferences. Uh, that's why it's so important to not just always be looking for activities and strategies to go ahead and apply in the classroom the next day when we go to conferences or, or when we watch a presentation but also to try to engage in a way um, that you become a creative teacher. Uh, because uh, once you have that uh, opportunity to create your own lessons, uh, you have material for the rest of your life. And it's authentic, it's your material, these are your ideas, and the students notice those kind of things. So anyway, Going back to the main reason for this video is that um, you know kids and parents had some questions regarding uh, or comments regarding the class during these parent-teacher conferences, and I realized that I started talking to them more in terms of what uh, or how second language acquisition works. So let's uh, I, I have some notes here from the conferences. So one of the things that I heard uh, from a couple of students is, well, I, I love Spanish. I love the class and uh, I love the environment, but I, I can't seem to be able to speak the language. And so my, my answer to that one uh, was, well, you know that uh, sometimes we just say things to ourselves and we end up believing what we're saying to ourselves. Uh, so I'm, I'm talking to this about this to, to a student, to a teenager. So I have to put this in, in these terms. So I say, uh, just, you know, the moment you start thinking that you cannot do something, your brain is gonna start believing it. So my advice is number one, you feel good in the class, you like the environment, so start telling yourself that you actually can speak the language, that yes, you can speak the language and start little, you know, uh, and I tell them, you know, that I'm not pressuring you to give me output constantly because I understand that, uh, you know, the input that you're receiving uh, is the most important thing and that you are understanding. So your brain is processing all that information but it's important that you tell yourself that you can do it. And then I gave the example, you know, I said, just think about how sometimes politicians work. They have one message and they repeat constantly that message, that message. They repeat that constantly to the people who are listening to them. And suddenly millions of people believe in that message because it was repeated to them so many times. So the same thing happens with um, language acquisition. The more you tell yourself that you can actually speak the language, the more comfortable your brain is going to be in order to try it. And I told this person, you know, uh, that happens to me every day. You know, sometimes I didn't have a, a good night. I, I was tired. But the first thing that I tell myself before every class is, I'm gonna have a, the best class. This is going to be my best class ever. And uh, I repeat that to myself many times. And most of the times it actually works. I don't know if it was the best class ever, but the kids didn't get to see me tired or ornery or anything like that. So it's a, it's a, it's an, a matter of attitude combined with what we can uh, help our brain with. Another student uh, or other students say, well, Senor, I want an A when I ask them about their goals for the class. So uh, my goal is to have an A in the class. 
So um, to that, you know, um, I always tell them, well, you know, that's a very short term goal to get an A in the class. Uh, how are you going to get the A? I ask. So they say, well, I will study more. And then I tell him or her and parents, but you do know that we really do not need to understand languages because that's not the way it works. I cannot say that I teach languages, that I teach Spanish. I facilitate Spanish. So I create the conditions to give you adequate, comprehensible input so you can understand what's going on, plus a little more so you get challenged and then you get immersed into what we're doing here and your brain starts, you know, making all those connections. And number two, um, we uh, do not learn languages. We acquire languages. So when you say that you need to study more and learn more the language, uh, what you are telling me is that you are going to spend the night before the quiz regurgitating all that information and memorizing it and then you're going to forget it because you, in reality you have not acquired the language. So I want that your goal besides having a good grade in this class is to, to acquire the language. Do not worry about learning the language because those are two different things. Um, other comments. Senor, I don't know what it is, but I'm understanding more this year. I, I feel that I'm understanding more and I feel that, that I want to speak more. Um, so, well, that is because, you know, you're doing your 50%. You are allowing yourself to uh, make sure that you uh, understand that what we are saying in the class. You know, you're listening with the intent to understand. And that's why you feel that way. Um, it's, it's funny because I used to have a very structured class, you know, and uh, I was very proud of that. But sometimes um, a little bit of less structure, but more comprehensible input goes a, a long way. Uh, because number one, the kids really crave surprise. They crave uh, novelty. And uh, when you're too structured, your class lacks of that. And uh, when it's about learning a language, you want that novelty and you want that surprise. You want uh, the situation to make an impression on your brain. So this is what I tell the students, you know, you're understanding more. Not because I'm a good teacher. I tell them I'm, I'm not a good teacher. I'm not even a teacher. I'm a facilitator of language here. Hello. See, you're understanding more because you're making an effort to um, listening with the intent to understand. As simple as that. See, another student tells me, Senor, I think that short grammar uh, explanations make more sense. You know, they make more sense and I can apply them easily. And I just look at them and I say, isn't that wonderful? You know, that before, and I tell them, I put myself in that situation. I say, before I used to spend at least 30 minutes of each class explaining the grammar and having the students uh, drill activities and exercises where they had to, you know, use this or X um, grammar. But they, didn't feel that successful, probably a few, you know, out of 30, probably three or four at the most, they felt that they were successful with that approach. But now I just give them an example. Like for example, if we're gonna be studying the presente perfecto or present perfect or preterito perfecto in Spain, um, I just go on the board, I write, you know, yo he visitado Madrid muchas veces. And I just tell them, what do you think that means? Well, they give me different versions, you know? And then we go from there. And then uh, we start recognizing those structures and uses of uh, that particular grammar uh, topic in, in readings, in songs, in uh, videos. And I point at those things. 
And that's how they all of a sudden start working with them and recognize what we're talking about and use them. So yeah, short grammar explanations, you're right. Um, they have a better impact as long as we put them in context. It's not that I explain for five minutes and then I forget about that and I start doing something different. Um, some, some parents, you know, they are very uh, grateful and they say things like, Senor, thank you for what you do in the class, for the student. And again, I always say, you know, it's the student who's doing the job, it's the student who's putting their time, it's the student making the effort. So congratulations to your student. And then at the same time, they say, you know, in previous uh, classes, uh, they didn't have the same type of success. And I really, um, I'm very careful with uh, that because uh, I respect all the work of my uh, colleagues, not just at my school, but in every context. And I just tell them, you know what? The thing is that you probably didn't feel at that point that you were acquiring the language the way you're doing it here, but that doesn't mean that your brain wasn't working. Your brain was storaging information, information, information that you are allowing now to get out. So all the time that you're telling me that you didn't feel the class was as effective, you were actually acquiring somehow language, you know? It's like in life, you go through so many experiences that you don't even realize. You're, you're learning to drive right now, right? Yeah, I know, you got your permit last week. You realize everything that you see when you are driving that you don't pay attention to, you're not conscious about that, see? But the moment you need that information, your brain will retrieve it and you will use it. Like for example, we stop the car when there's an old lady crossing the street in real life, see? So it works the same. Language is life, as simple as that. The brain storages information to use at a later, uh, later time. So, um, Again, we're not, we're not language teachers. And when we say this to the parents, somehow uh, they understand that the kid is also involved in this process. That is not just us. We uh, facilitate language. We create the conditions for language to happen in our class, which is an artificial environment. So in that sense, the student needs to be part of this idea and work together. So if anyone gets into your class trying to suggest that you're not doing your job the way you should, always think that uh, second language acquisition theories, that comprehensible input theory, it's on your side. And uh, the more you use it, in your instruction, the more you understand it, and the more you're gonna be able to teach also parents and families about how uh, acquiring a language works. So life, language is like life. Life is language. Thank you so much. See you later. Bye-bye. Adios.